So welcome to this week's episode of Leadership Soundbites with Rocco and Michelle. And we're going to follow up because last week we had Dr. Michael Conroy, Chief Medical Officer from Sutter Medical Group. And Mike talked about just his leadership journey and some of the aha moments because we were talking about lean thinking and the focus obviously on the thinking. And so when Roko and I talked about it, we thought, you know, there's an opportunity to do a couple other things here. And so one of the ones that we want to focus on this week is the power of going and seeing. So power of going and seeing. And so it is, I'm going to start us off with a quote, and then we'll share a little bit more of that. Okay, so here I'm reading, I'm reading. So it is from Taichi Ono, the father basically of, of lean thinking Toyota production system. Data is of course important, but I place the greatest emphasis on facts. And so some people may be sitting back thinking, I've heard this quote a lot, right? Thinking, what's the difference, right? And I think underlying that is data it is the, you could be hearing it. People tell you certain things that are happening. You could be looking at reports mm -hmm. to say, you know, here's how we're doing. Sales are down. Um, you know, the example that we gave last week where the, you know, the, the medication errors, you know, the scanning stuff, that's data. If you're getting a report that says, hey, it's, I'm making stuff up right now, people, 49%, right, medication error rate. The facts are what's actually happening. And so I, I want to make that distinction for us um, because the go and see is a critical aspect of that. And we heard Mike talk partly about that too. Yeah. How about you, Rocco? Yeah, I think for me too, what you're, what, what's um, speaking to me is really the, the go and see is about um, finding out what the truth is in this situation. So data often is retrospective. Sometimes it can be in real time, but it's still, it's just a signal. It's just a signal. The facts, the only way you're going to get to the facts is if you go and see and really see and observe what's either actually happening or what the condition is that people are working in. But it's really about what's the truth in this situation. And it also allows you to, uh, when you go and see, it allows you to question um, assumptions that you might be carrying about the situation. A lot of times leaders will have tons of experience of when they were on the floor doing that thing. And so they have their own memories of what life was like when they were doing that, that thing. And so we don't often question those assumptions. And so going and seeing allows us, again, to find the truth in this situation because it might be slightly different. So but there's, there are so many things that, that fired <laughs> when you were, when you were talking like, yes, and yes, and yes, and yes. <laughs> so a couple of things that, that come to mind for me, right, is that when we're, when we're going to see, and, and I hear this from people and, and Mike service it, and I shared a story with another position leader is, if you're in it all the time, so different, so maybe you're not a leader, maybe you're whatever, and you're in it from day to day, is we tell ourselves, we're there all the time. We know what's going on. But the thing is, you have to be actually, when you're going and seeing, in a different role. And you talked about observing, right? So you yeah. actually need to be in the observer role yeah. and not the doer of the stuff, because you're not going to see it. The other thing that came to mind for me is a story this was, I don't know how many years ago I was at one of our hospitals because I was finance director there. And we had this consultant come in and we were working through the, um, when a patient presents the registration process and all that stuff. And this was in the ED. So the people, and I, and I looked back at that later after I started learning about lane and process improvement. And I thought there were some key people that were missing in that conversation. Because what we did, consultant, myself, the CFO, and the manager of the registration process were in a room. I didn't know anything about the registration process, okay? And so I'm there, I can ask questions, I can do all that stuff, but here's the thing. There wasn't anyone that was actually doing the job. So the manager was speaking from the procedures that were written up. This is how we do stuff, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so I remember toward the end, we spent several days in the room mapping out how we do stuff to try and fix the problem that was going on. 
And at the end of it, when we had all this stuff done, because I'm learning, you know, doing stuff, I said, so how do we actually confirm that this is how they're doing it? Mm -hmm. What? <laughs> because there was this underlying assumption that this is how your process is and the procedure is, and this is it, that this is what's actually happening. Yeah. And the reality of it is people at the front line, for the most part, are great at getting the work done and they will create workarounds if what right. you've cascaded down to them isn't working so good. That's right. That's right. So, I, I love I love that story. I you know and you know my own personal experience with it too is um, back in the manufacturing days. My manufacturing days, one of we were we were measuring the performance of on time delivery, and my boss came to me and said, Rocco, you know, we've got really bad on time delivery. We were like in the sixty percent on time delivery, and he says we've we've got to do something to improve this. And he says, what's, what's driving it? And I said, well, it's the carriers, you know, our trucking companies are, are showing up late. They're just late. And he says, well, how do you know it? Mm -hmm. I said, well, I talked to the plant manager and, and there, he's telling me that our, our carriers are showing up late. And he's, well, well, how, you know, he kept asking me, how do you know? And then ultimately, <laughs> <laughs> ultimately he said, you know, have you actually gone out and seen what's happening? And it was just this huge awakening when I actually went out and see because it was nothing what I had been told or what I had assumed about the situation. What was actually happening was we had one entry point for all the trucking companies, whether you were raw materials or, where, or whether you were picking up for finished goods. Mm -hmm. And there was this, literally this line wrapped around the building and out um this long street that led to the main uh, the main street of trucking companies, and when when we saw this, I started to ask questions. You know, why why is there such well? Well, you know, if they're bringing in a container of raw materials, I have to make I have to walk around and inspect the truck. I have to make sure that the seal is still intact and stuff like that. Whereas if it was an empty trailer, you know, that he just waved them on. But because there was a mix. You know, it took time to get through that. And so the simple solution was creating two separate entry points, one for empty trailers, one for loaded trailers, so that the empty trailers could get to the dock on time, load and get out and deliver. And we went from 60% to over 98% on time delivery just by making that simple change. Um, but what it taught me was this framework of seek, sense and share. Seek, have that curious mind, seek to understand what's actually happening. When you go and seek, you need to sense, you need to observe, you need to think, you need to challenge. Um, and then share is engage the people who are doing the work. So why did you make the choice that you made? if it varied from the standard work or, you know, what was it that led you to this thing that you did as opposed to this other thing? And, and that's really where the go, the power to me is in go and see in it, you know, because you're, as I said before, you're, you're finding the truth in the situation. Well, and the thing is, if you think about it, the manager, when you talk to him, okay, is on the other side of that long line that's around the building. And yeah. so from his perspective, you know, he's not lying to you, right? Oh, no, no value in the fact that he's he he doesn't know what he doesn't know mm -hmm. and so literally from his vantage point perspective if you will mm -hmm. it was the carriers because right. the doc's ready yeah the doc the was carriers ready carriers just aren't showing up and he could have done the first part he might have been curious and he might have went and saw but he the the second part of sensing challenging when you're observing challenge your thinking and think differently about the process. He was accepting the fact that we only had one entry point as opposed to challenging. So what is it about that one challenging point that's creating this backlog? Well, you know, what, what brings to mind for me is the whole idea um, is that your processes, that one entry point, are currently designed to deliver <laughs> the results that you're getting today. That's right. right. And yeah. so if you want different results, you need to look at doing things differently. 
That's right. Uh, but to your, it's a, it's a mindset and it could have been for him. We've always done it this way. And maybe there's more raw material than what they have before. Or maybe there's a new guy at the gate that's actually following the work of what it is to inspect a raw material truck. <laughs> blew up because maybe the other guys just flagged him through. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, the, the last part about it is just as important to the share part, engaging the people who are doing the work. I think um, one of the stories that has, has always uh, resonated with me, um, John Shook in one of his many interviews shared when he was at Toyota. And you know when you start out as a new leader in Toyota, he says, they put you out on the line. They want you to do the work of the people that you're going to be managing. Mm -hmm. And he's a, a very tall man compared to, you know, the height of Japanese people. And, you know, he was on the line and he was trying to put some parts together inside this uh, automobile frame. And he wasn't following the standard work as far as his body position. Mm -hmm. And because the shop leaders are on the floor, they were observing him not following standard. Mm -hmm. And so after they observed him do this multiple times, they engaged him. So that's the share part is they engaged him to say, why, why are you choosing to do this? And what he shared with them is, hey, I'm, I'm too large to fit in in the position that you've asked me to. And so it was the job of those leaders to, to engage, but then also to figure out, well, what would be the right position? And they worked with him based on his height to figure out what would be the proper position for him without stressing his, his legs and his yeah. back unnecessarily. Well, and the, the, uh, the other upside to that, right, because the underlying, which I love, uh, principle and lean is respect for people. Mm -hmm. And so it, it could have been a situation that, that the, you could, he could have come down and, and basically chastised him because you're not following standard work and this is not how we do it. Um, but, but to engage him to go help me understand what, why, why you're doing or not doing it this way and then figure out a solution for him so that he doesn't strain his body. He can still comply. Maybe there's a certain angle that you have to be at to tighten things the right way or whatever. But I love that whole idea of assume the best intent, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. don't go charging in the fact that you don't respect our processes, which is mm -hmm. why you're not even following them. Mm -hmm. So I, I love that part of it. And it's, yeah. it's not just within lean, it's just the way to engage people and, and come with curiosity, because we've talked about a curious mind, to seek to understand. You know, it's what's, what's creating this, what's driving this, the same thing with the trucks going in. Uh, it's powerful stuff like the yeah. other the other leader did with the last week, the two barcodes, you know, it's like but she did it out of frustration. It's like, OK, we're going to fix this and start getting these phone calls um, and find out it was something so simple, but not so simple. So I just yeah. there's I think we can save so much time if yes. we don't observe and see what's happening from an observation role. Yeah. And that's so crazy. So let's talk about observation because Ono talked about, Taichi Ono talked about the Ono circle, mm -hmm. right? So you're in the middle and there's this circle around you and you're observing, but what it requires of you is to have big eyes, big ears, and little tiny mouth. So very little engagement, if at any, um, while you're observing. So you can take it all in as this objective person, as opposed to, you know, having a conversation with the operators and placing your judgment on what you're, you're talking, what you're seeing. Uh, and so a couple things came to mind when you were saying that, and this is for people to walk away with, because you may not be drawing a circle on the shop floor <laughs> and standing there for hours <laughs> on end. You're like, seriously? The but imaginary. The, yeah, but the purpose was is that you don't go past the circle and you're not engaging in the process. You're literally sitting, you're a fly on the wall, right? Yeah. A fly on the yes. wall or a fly on the shop floor. But what I will tell you and what came to mind for me is what Mike said last week is that it's important to message and set the context for people. In Toyota, mm -hmm. they know why leaders are coming to shop floor. It's right. not punitive. It's not to catch them doing something wrong. It's sincerely to help and observe and, and you know, help improve processes. Not every culture and every organization 
realizes this or has set the expectation. And so before you go and observe, let people know why you're coming. Don't make them guess, okay? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I guarantee you they're not going to guess the right way or the intention that you have not to catch them at something doing wrong. They're actually to help and learn. And I think one of the other things that's beneficial is have people within those roles play an observation role. Mm -hmm. It's super powerful when you go from the doer of the stuff to the observer of the doer of the stuff because you're going to see things that you didn't see before because you just naturally worked around stuff. Yeah. But, and you know all, this all the time. Yeah. When we, uh, when we worked together and we were doing value stream mapping events or Kaizen events, you know, improvement events for those who don't know what Kaizen Thank is. You. I was hoping <laughs> that you'd clarify for people. But uh, yeah. 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 You know, we, when we'd go out and do observations, we were intentional about having people observe jobs that weren't their own jobs. And, um, I always, I, my, my favorite story is when a physician, a, a, an emergency department physician observed the nurse's role in the flow of a patient through the emergency department. And, and he was, his eyes were so wide open after that. He's like, I, I had no idea, mm -hmm. had no idea. And, you know, sometimes just in that there's, there's power in, in having someone observe someone else's role in, oh, walk, in the chain. Walk, yes. Walk a step or two in someone <laughs> else's shoes. Yeah. And, yeah. And you can surface whatever stories you got going. Yeah. So we could talk about this stuff for ever. Yeah. <laughs> It's true. It's one of those topics that just, there's so much to say about there, it. There is, but I, but I want to make sure people feel that it's still a soundbite. <laughs> so, <laughs> so wrapping us up, Broco, what's one thing that you'd love people to walk away with and the power of go and see? So the power of go and see for me is really about finding the truth in this situation. The the one that the one that I would say is to challenge yourself to think just because you thought you knew it, maybe you knew it a year ago, or you do it every day, that it requires you to be in a different role when you go and see to really deeply understand mm -hmm. what's happening. So this is Leadership Sound Bites with Roko and Michelle. We enjoy chatting obviously with each other hopefully you've gotten something out of it too we'd love your comments like share subscribe i think i'm getting better at that yes and, and, and share your stories about go and see i'd love to see some of the stories that others have about go and see yes and tap your friends on the shoulder so they can share theirs too yes. all right until next time have a great one thank Bye -bye. you